Man, I'm hyped. Hyped up. It's Monday, January 25th, 2021. My name is Alex. This is another installment of the Corporate Cowboys podcast. And I'm hyped, man. I'm hyped because it's Monday. I'm hyped because I woke up. I'm alive. Shit is do or die. Some corporate cowboy shit. Always. I scarfed down my lunch. Now I get to enjoy a little bit of dessert real quick. A cupcake. You may or may not hear me chew, depending on um, on how neat or messy I might be. But uh, I was thinking, <laughs> I was thinking, I was talking, I was conversing about apex predators and what it means to be one. And that's probably what I'll, I'll title this episode. Apex predators. <clears throat> do they exist? Is it you? Is it me? How do you become one? What does it mean to be at the top, at the tippy top? Are apex predators necessarily at the top? Are they top predators? <laughs> uh, this goes back this goes back to um, the discussion I had with uh, another associate. And I think I've mentioned on this on the podcast before of what it means to be the best and what it means to be better. So you could be better than the best and refuse, refuse to be labeled the best. Well, because once you do, I mean, once you gain that that uh, recognition, once you gain that position as being the best, you, you have a fucking target on your back. You have a fucking target on your back. You have gunners, you have hitters coming after you. Folks who want the fucking crown, heavy is the head, right? Nah, heavy is the fucking crown. And I never want it. I never want it. Folks want to complain about how heavy the fucking crown is? Easy. Relieve them. Relieve them of the fucking crown. But would I ever put it on? Ha! <laughs> nope. <laughs> I mean, a pumpkin spice muffin. I guess it'd be a cupcake. It's like a baby muffin. Does that make me a basic bitch? Because I like pumpkin spice? It's bomb. Don't get me wrong. They're homemade. But, you know. You gotta appreciate the little things. You have to enjoy. Enjoy the good things while you have them. You gotta learn to enjoy the good things that you have now. Lest life show you the things that you once had. Wise man once um once said something like that. It was along those lines. The sentiment was deep and the words were precise, concise, clearly. You could show, I mean, you could, when you can appreciate the little good things, it's because you've experienced loss, you've experienced pain, and you find goodness. You're able, to, you have the ability to find good. You're able to create goodness, I guess. <laughs> yeah, you're able to create goodness. You're able to, to generate a sense of wonder out of very basic things. So yeah, I mean, like, I'm, I, I won't, I don't look down on folks who are like, oh my God, it's raining. Or like, you know, like happy, like, oh my goodness, it's, it's snowing or it's so sunny out. It's so beautiful. Hell yeah. It's sunny. It's beautiful. It's nice. But you got to appreciate the good while you have it. Because when it comes time to appreciate the bad, I mean, you have to appreciate your situation. You have to assess and evaluate the bad in order to turn it good, right? You ever get in a gunfight? And you have to appreciate the gunfight while you're in that bitch and fighting to get out. This might be a short one. I'm waiting for a phone call. 
but I'll come back. I know the episodes have been about an hour, and I'm trying to keep them to an hour. But if I have to cut out, I'll cut back in, and I'll make up whatever time I'm I'm lacking. Join me. Join me on my adventure, on my path to becoming an apex predator. <clears throat> it's what I'm going to school for right now. <laughs> it's what, it's what I, I just got out of class for. Apex Predators 101. <laughs> hmm. That's some corporate cowboy shit, man. My bad. I'm murdering this fucking muffin right now. Just so you guys don't hear me eat throughout the entire fucking episode. So yeah, like the first five minutes. The first couple minutes. But no more than ten. It's gonna be me just wolfing this shit down. Chasing it with some drink. What it means to be an apex predator. It means you can prey on anything and anyone. It means you recognize that you're that you're just a human, and so is everybody else. I don't I don't cringe, but it does give me pause. It makes me pause a little bit when somebody says, Oh, I'm like a tiger. Or I'm like a shark, or I'm like you know like they, they I'm like a silverback gorilla or whatever the fuck. Like they try to they try to categorize themselves as animals. And I've used them too. Keep in mind, just keep in mind that when you use them, you give insight into what your own mindset is. And an apex predator, humans, i.e. humans, even if they're not actively praying, apex predators pick up on that. If somebody says, oh, that guy's a snake, an apex predator picks up on the fact that they're a snake. And then they could choose to become what? An eagle? A mongoose? Fucking honey badger. <laughs> and just diet. Diet on solely snakes. <laughs> That's some apex predator shit. That's some corporate cowboy shit. Adaptability, flexibility. Never getting stuck. Never getting caught up. Being able to... Uh, to roll with the punches, assess and evaluate, strategize, and employ, employ strategies, apply logic and tact so that you come out being better. Again, not the best, not the best. When you're being better, who do you think, who do you think people who strive to be better go up against they go up against the best and they come out better for it i mean in that instance they might the opposition might only be better than you right that's why they even became your opposition your adversary and others might view them as as unconquerable as fucking impenetrable as undefeated but they haven't met somebody better. They haven't, met, they haven't met you. They haven't met I. They haven't met me. You and I. You and I. They might not have gone up against some actual corporate cowboys. Keep in mind, I'm trying to, I'm trying to create some, some, some solidarity between corporate cowboys. Corporate cowboys strive to be better. 
per se. They know what it means to create better business, have better policy and better practice, and know to eliminate anybody who's not carrying those ideals, those values. And I, I don't mean physically eliminate. I mean professionally. <laughs> Which, yeah, I, I, I guess, can um, has, an, has an aspect of physicality to it. But it's professional elimination. Why? You don't want motherfuckers sullying business. It's those motherfuckers who think that they are the best and sullying business, bottlenecking it, fucking up innovation, suppressing good ideas, oppressing good people. It's those cats who think they're the best. And then they get... They get, um, for lack of a better word, they get bettered. They get, um, hold on. <laughs> I had a good one for this one. I don't want to say they get bested because then that, that puts you like in a position of being the best, right? But they as individuals, when they get improved, it's because previously they were shit right so if you're eliminating them you, you know you know how folks say a motherfucker's better off dead right <laughs> you made them you can make them better <laughs> Woo! it's monday monday the 25th of january 2021 i'm feeling all right fucking proof of life my name is Alex, by the way. I am forever yours, your intern. The Corporate Cowboys podcast is powered by incorporating associates, uh, literally and professionally. To be an apex predator, to be an apex predator, you have to know how to pray. You have to know how to pray. Both the P-R-A-Y and the P-R-E-Y. You have to know how to do both effectively. Effectively. Because it's not enough to just talk. You got to walk. It's not enough. It's not enough to just say. You have to be. And that's what the, the, that's what both aspects of the pray. That's what both types of praying are. When you pray, you're talking, you're, you're wishing, you're stating, you're promising a promise if this happens or whatever the fuck, then I'll, I'll do, I'll come through on this other shit. <laughs> you got to know how to do that. You have to know how to do that. Realistically, you have to be reasonable too. I can't just ask for a million dollars. I have to pray for it. I have to both pray, I have to talk about it, and I have to be about it. I have to be a million dollars to be worth a million dollars. I have to be like a million dollars to be worth a million dollars. Like attracts like. That's in some instances. I know opposites attract, but like also begets like. Yes or no? Yay or nay? Absolutely it does. I got to know how to talk. I got to know how to pray on the level of a million dollars to be able and act on the level of a million dollars. And I'll get there eventually. A million is just arbitrary, all right? I'm just throwing that figure out there. Don't think like I'm striving to be a fucking millionaire. I've said before, time and time, and I've said it on this podcast, that I would love to be able to handle millions just handle them. I know what to do with them. I mean, I've been at a, at a level in my life where I've had money coming in and out. It's dried up some because I've had to go back to school, but I'm still, I'm still venturing. I'm still venturing. I'm not, I'm not, um, what is it? Shilling? I'm not shilling, like ordering shit made in China and fucking rebranding or whatever. 
Ideally, I'd like it all to be sourced here domestically, locally with folks that I know, folks that I can create a network with here in the U.S. Why? Because there's this strength in locality. There's strength in having a network. Obviously, I want to grow stronger too, right? But as far as handling millions go, I know what to put them into already. I know what to put them into. And when I get out of school, I'll know exactly what to be. I know what to walk into. I know where to go and what to walk into, what to uh, get my hands in. But like I said, I'd like to handle the mills and only make a couple thou. I like to live comfortably. That's it, really. And comfortably might still be day to day, month to month, check to check. All right? You just, yeah, you just have to know how to budget. It's not that fucking hard. You, you just have to budget. I'm not gonna, this podcast isn't, isn't about showing you how to budget. I might go into budgeting, but there's plenty of resources online that will tell you how to budget. What the general concept is, you wanna have more money coming in than you do going out, but if you're a corporate cowboy and you accept living lean, it's gonna be about equal. It's gonna be about equal. It's gonna be nonprofit. It's gonna be nonprofit. So long as you're in business, this shit is nonprofit. Why? Because you're living off of the business. That, that doesn't mean you can't have investments, you can't have personal property, you can't have a vacation home. You might get there eventually. Will it all be in my name? Psych. Nah, I won't. I have partners, I have associates. It'll be in somebody else's name. It'll be in company names, trustees. I'll, but I'll have the access to them via the network, via the locality, via the local strength. That's what they mean when they say on the strength. They front you a pack on the strength. Fucking street talk or street code or whatever the fuck. It's just folks having trust in you to let you hold something on the strength. That's it. Some folks say like, oh, on the block or on the hood or whatever the fuck, but on the strength just makes more sense. It just makes more sense because there's a certain, there's a certain degree of trust where there might not be affiliation, <clears throat> but the association is significant to the point of professional, to the point of consummate professionalism. And that shit is life and death. That's do or die all the time. That's some corporate cowboy shit. <sighs> to be an apex predator, to be an apex predator, <clears throat> There's some folks at the top. There's folks at the top who who fell to the fucking top on accident. And they're not apex predators at all. There's folks with money who get taken for suckers every day. Every day. There's folks with money who think they're about the business. And they're really not. They they like to play as... Um, they... Uh, hold on. <laughs> hold on. Don't talk reckless, Alex. Don't be so reckless. There's some folks with money who think they're making moves, who think they're who think they're apex predators, who think they're bullies until they meet apex predators, until they meet an actual bully, until they meet a corporate cowboy. And a corporate cowboy is supposed to move in such a way where they don't even look like they're praying. They're just about business. They don't have time for bullshit. They don't have time for games. They don't have time for fuckery. They'll talk you into a deal. They'll, <clears throat> using logic and tact, they'll roll you up. They'll, using, <laughs> hold up, <laughs> using logic and tact, they will roll you up and smoke you. And I mean that in the in the best in the best possible sense. 
in the um, most polite and professional manner. <laughs> I had a, I work with uh, with an associate. They were a manager at a, um, what was it, a hotel? It's like it was like a business hotel, like an extended stay, and they were a manager. And uh, in training, they let me know that uh, that the goal of managing, that the goal of um, of a, a Appeasing, of appeasing customers is to give little to nothing to them and still have them thank you at the end of the interaction. They didn't say it so bluntly like that. That's just my mental creating that. That, um, that That's just my mental. That's my, my mentality, my criminal mentality. That's me being a stand-up guy with a criminal mind. <laughs> Essentially, whenever a guest staying at the hotel, like yeah, they're they're business guests, right? So they come through. They're they're busy people. They're handling their own uh, their own affairs, trying to have uh, a productive stay while they're there. So they're using the hotel uh, Wi-Fi, the the gym, the pool, jacuzzi, or whatever. And uh, any conflict comes up or if there's a dispute that should uh, arise they'll come to the manager and they told me this um this acquaintance of mine this friend that when they come through you always want to speak to them as if they were a long lost friend a friend you hadn't seen in five years so it's been five years since you've seen them and you're excited when they first come in, right? When you're first checking them in. And then and then if you see them on the property, like they're still your friend. Like you're not going to give them the same treatment as if you've never seen them, like as if you haven't seen them for five years, right? They'll just be like the friend you hadn't seen for five years now staying at your hotel. So the experience continues when seamless, when seamless experience. And it makes perfect sense. I mean... Uh, it makes perfect sense. There's a book. I believe it's by Ray Bradbury. Where this guy, I think it was Ray Bradbury, where this, uh, where this uh, group of astronauts is, is stuck in, in space. And one of the, I think it's Ray Bradbury. One of the astronauts has this fucking condition where every uh, two minutes or three minutes they forget. They forget people exist. So uh, when they hear, I think it's when they hear like a, a person over like their their spacesuit mic over like their, their intercom or whatever, uh, they're like, um, they treat them like, oh, you're alive. And then like when they stop talking to them or, or like when they don't see them in their mind, their mind automatically goes to the person's dead. So like say Bob has this condition and uh, Bob in his mind, because they haven't seen Joe all day, um, believes Joe is dead. Joe doesn't exist until they see Joe and they could have seen each other, you know, yesterday, the day before, but today Bob sees Joe and says, Joe, you're here, you're alive. And Joe's wondering like, what the fuck is Bob's issue, right? And then uh, Joe leaves the, you know, Joe leaves the room, like, uh, like goes through, through the little fucking courtesies a little small talk with Bob, like, hey, yeah, Bob, I'm, apparently I'm alive or whatever the fuck, and how's the day going or whatever? Are you enjoying the weather? And Bob's like, oh, yeah, I'm just hanging out, just cooling, just being chill. And uh, Joe heads off, and Bob grows sad because Bob thinks Joe died <laughs> when they left the room. Yeah, that's how this book is. That's how this book is, where, like, Joe, because Joe left the room, like, fucking Bob believes that they died and grows sad, gets down on himself, depressed. And then Joe walks back in for something. Like Joe could have just done something simple, like forgot, I don't know, their phone on the table or their, their wallet or like a fucking pen or a pencil. And Bob says, Joe, you're alive. You know, just shit like that. Like it's just a condition. So you do not want to replicate that in a hotel setting, essentially was what this friend was telling me. And... You don't always want to, because that shit's going to come off fake. As unreasonable as it sound, as, as unreasonable as it read in the book, 
this shit is whack in real life. Like if you ever came across someone with that particular issue, you would think they were psychotic. You would think they had a psychotic break. And that's what I believed when I read the book. I was like, this person is fucking broken. <clears throat> but it works the first time. It works the first time ever when you meet them because Bob and Joe might have been friends and Joe might know that Bob has this issue. And Joe might just be patient with Bob because they know Bob has this particular mental issue. But not knowing, having not met someone, if there were like a stranger had came through and they didn't know Bob, they weren't friends with Bob, they would automatically off top believe, you know, Bob was broken, Bob was out of whack. And Joe, Joe now knows Bob is broken, Bob is out of whack, but they're just patient with him. They, they can live with it. In a hotel setting, you obviously want to greet them as like a long lost friend that you haven't seen for five years the first time. But the next time you see them down the hall, you're still working at a hotel and they're still staying at a hotel. So you want to address them as such. You want to maybe catch up with them a little bit over the course of their stay. Like if you see them during the week, hey, how are you doing? How's work? How you been? How's your week? Are you enjoying your stay? Not, hey, it's you, you're here. That sort of thing. <clears throat> and this friend of mine was a fucking G, a boss when it came to this, a boss. We had the dumbest, some of the dumbest disputes. Not the dumbest, I mean, everybody, everybody feels Everybody considers themselves to be a reasonable person and their opinion valid. So, I mean, that, that, that's another point of being an apex predator is you're able to take in all this information. You're able to process all this information and what you produce is solely your intent, solely your motive and your maximization of the opportunity afforded to you by life. And this guy was a gangster with it. A gangster. No complaints ever came his way. I mean, at least about him. He never had any complaints placed on him. But folks that came to him with complaints or disputes or some kind of conflict that came up in the hotel, maybe they thought their room was uh, overbilled or overcharged or not clean or not kept, housekeeping was slacking or some some shit. They turn and tell, would tell me the goal, the goal of managing. The goal in conflict resolution and dispute management is. <laughs> Hold on, I'm trying to say this in a way where he doesn't sound like, he doesn't still sound like a villain, like an apex predator, though that, that's, that's what he was. The goal is to not go into the hotel's pocket, right? Because at the end of the day, we're working for the hotel, we're representing the hotel as professionals. And the last thing we want is the hotel to suffer for something that we do. So we're not going to be handing out free stays. We're not going to be handing out free access to, you know, privileges or amenities. We're not going to be handing out free nothing, free shit, nothing, nothing, nothing is free. <laughs> no free lunches, dog. No fucking free lunches. <clears throat> he said the goal is to not give anything away the goal is to the goal is to not give anything away like when you speak with them when you talk to them the words you use you want to use decisively you want to be decisive in in what you say and how you say it so you address their issue you make that you hear them out obviously because the first part the first part in conversation is listening so you know what you're fucking talking about You want to know what you're talking about, but not go into the hotel's pocket. So essentially, 
how did how do you say it? Because I I don't want to make them look bad. I'm not I'm, I mean I'm not incriminating them, but the reputation is solid, and I don't want to uh, call the reputation into question. <clears throat> he said, "You don't you don't want to uh, give anything away, and you still." <sighs> I guess I'll say it my way. So you want to <laughs> you want to fuck them over and have them thank you for it. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, what you're doing is you're imposing your will as manager, as a boss, as a person in authority with the capacity to do this. You want to fuck them and then have them thank you. That's, I mean, some real fucking pimp shit. Real fucking corporate cowboy pimp shit. <laughs> he said it much nicer because, I mean, even though he was still a manager, he was still a professional. I mean, he's not, he didn't make it to where he was by being a, uh, by being vulgar and it, what, by being, you know, just being a vulgar asshole. And though it's escaping me now, <clears throat> I'm losing my voice. This episode has been exciting already. And while it's escape, while it's, while it's escaping me now, while it's escaping me now, while it's, ex while it's, <clears throat> hold on. While it escapes, while it ex, while it escapes me now, there you go. While it escapes me now, I know that that lesson, that those words have motivated me to remain a professional, a consummate professional everywhere I go, everywhere I go. Having folks, making folks feel like they've been heard and having folks thank you for hearing them out. That's like, that's, that's the end all be all to conflict resolution. Folks just want to be heard out. That's all. They want to have their concerns be heard. And you'll see this a lot. We, um, I mean, we, we did compensate folks for, for things, items that we were in the wrong for. And that's what I meant earlier when guests would come to us with the dumbest complaints. Some guests really just wanted a free fucking stay out of the deal or like a free meal ticket out of it. And uh, this manager, he, he, had a, he had an eye for that. He was a gangster, I'm telling you. You're obviously not fucking innocent people over, but folks are looking to fuck you over. You're able to turn it around on them. It doesn't matter if they said that they're going to their company's HR, fucking their, their, their company's administrator, their, their executives in order to, to uh, twist your arm and have you hand out, you know, free, have you hand out free service, free product. Fuck all that. Fuck all of that. This guy was a, he was a G with it. A total fucking G. He was, an, he was an apex predator at what he did. Apex predator. And he never claimed to be the best. He never claimed to be the best. But folks in our region knew him as one of the best. Better. Probably better than the best. But he wasn't like at the top of his region. He was constantly rising. He was always rising. But... As far as like the best, he never wanted to. Uh, he never wanted to hold that title. He never wanted to hold hold that title. It just, it just landed. It, it would just come across his desk. It would. I'm not gonna say it landed in his lap because he would never accept it. It would just come across his desk as he was in the best hotel. He worked with the best team. His was one of the best regions. They had the best numbers. But this guy, this guy was better than that. Better than that. Being the best didn't define him. Be, being the best did not define him better. Better than the best. He was a fucking G with it, man. And um, I'm sure he's I'm sure he's he's killing it out there somewhere. Whatever they're doing, he's fucking killing it. <clears throat> 
And if they uh, ever have a chance to hear this podcast, they'll know, they'll know exactly who I'm talking about. I'm talking 2014, 2015. Yeah, like 2015, 2016, 2015, 2016. Killing it. Fucking killing it, man. One of the fastest. One of the fastest to move up. One of the fastest to advance. That's how you know that, you know, that you have the marks. That's how you know that you have the makings of a corporate cowboy. That's you know that you have a, the makings of of just better, better material, better product, a better professional. A corporate cowboy, man. So identifying apex predators in the workplace, it's easy. It's easy. It's motherfuckers who are always smiling. Motherfuckers who are always in a good mood. Motherfuckers who will bullshit with the guests. And I mean, I do mean bullshit with the guests. Motherfuckers who are able to break that little barrier between customer service between asshole and and um, and friend, pretty much between just asshole stranger and long lost friend, motherfuckers were able to break that barrier down and can chop it up, can bullshit a little bit with the guests, and the guests are all about it. The guests, the guests love it. The guests love it. The guests will thank you for the experience. Thank you. Yeah, even the ones who try to fuck you over, they'll see how professionally you handle yourself. And the next time you come in, you already got the motherfucker corralled. You're a corporate cowboy. You already have them herded into their fucking corral. And they won't question. They won't bark out of place. They won't, they won't be selling you wolf tickets like, oh, my fucking room was messy when I got in or whatever. Nah, none of that. None of that. None. There's a, there's a standard that can be imposed and it's a standard that they respect when they see it, when they see an apex predator. So, again, some folks will think that they're the best at getting free shit and they really believe themselves to be apex predators at just getting free shit. <laughs> if, it's not, if it's not given voluntarily, you're scum. It's, it's, it's scum, it's scummy. You're a fucking snake. You're a fucking snake until you meet a mongoose. You're a fucking snake until you meet a corporate cowboy. And they'll have whatever they they'll have whatever they need to have in their hand. Fucking 44, 12 gauge, sawed off pistol grip. <laughs> For snakes? Easy. It's fucking cake. It's a piece of cake to eat a snake. <laughs> oh shit just remember when you're fucking with apex predators when you're dealing with an ex apex predator when you are dealing with apex predators you're dealing with human beings and to some human beings choose to be more professional than others choose to be better than others and other human beings are less professional they're not of the same caliber. So me, what do I want? I want um, to plug our social media because it's yours truly who's running it. Find us on Instagram. Again, I, we don't have any corporate sponsors for this project. Uh, this project is for self-improvement, for professional uh, career development, for professional development. Um, a lot of it you'll see is myself riffing off of the top pretty much with ideas that uh, I come across. Dang, I had, a, I had an idea for what this episode was going to be about, but it's maybe halfway through. And um, I'll save it. I'll save it. Apex Predators was a pretty good, was a pretty good theme going right now. But next episode is going to be good. <clears throat> It'll be about um, education and academia. Um, yeah, because we don't have any corporate sponsors, we're uh, still small and or just not, just not uh, don't have the exposure right now. Um, we haven't came across folks's uh, folks's desk 
who wants to reach out to us and have us promote uh, some wares or some crafts. Uh, but if you'd like, feel free, contact us. You can DM us on Instagram. If you find the email, email us also. I'm not going to give that out publicly. Um, or shoot us some snail mail. Uh, on Instagram, our handle is at incorporating dot associates underscore IA. Again, that's incorporating dot associates underscore IA. On Patreon, you can find us. You want to subscribe? By all means, please do so. Uh, there are some tiers there. Some of those aren't active. Um, but that's only because there aren't uh, enough members right now to produce bonus content. Um, what I do right now is uh, I devote at least an hour a week in order to get the basic podcast out. But if folks want some kind of special content, requested content, by all means, sign up for that second tier, that second or third tier. Uh, subscribe to it on a month to month basis and Absolutely, we'll create whatever content is requested of us. Doesn't matter how many request it. Um, I mean, it, it could be majority request or it could be a singular request, but whatever's requested can will it can be done. It can be done on Patreon. On um, if if you want to shoot us a couple dollars directly, by all means, I've mentioned what the money's going for. It's uh, helping. It's, it is helping me initially uh, with with education fees, with school uh, with school fees and legal fees for the organization because this is my uh, my project. It's what I'll be living off of in the future. So that's uh, being put to uh, personal and professional use for personal development, professional development, and finally. Um, well, ultimately, the organization, uh, it'll be one and the same. It'll, it'll, uh, man, a lot of fucking plans, a lot of fucking plans. It'll go from Alex to Alex Inc., uh, pretty much, but all of it under AIA. Um, what else? If you want to PayPal us? Again, something direct. PayPal.me slash corporate cowboys. Uh, we've also used Venmo. You can Venmo me directly uh, if you want to leave a comment or, or a request. By all means, please do so. The handle for that is at Alex underscore Coco for Corporate Cowboys. Again, that's Alex underscore Coco. And Cash App. We do accept Cash App also. The handle for that is Dollar sign corporate cowboys. Dollar sign corporate cowboys. Lastly but not least, visit us at Associates Incorporating Associates .org. You can shop for AI insignia pins. We should be designing more in the future and possibly rolling more out, but we have plenty in stock now. We have the fox, the stork the eagle, the bear, and uh, they're all handmade, handcrafted here in the U.S. using premium materials made by uh, some of our union friends on, on the eastern seaboard, on the east coast. But yeah, we're looking to take uh, take this thing worldwide if we can, but obviously, honest, obviously we want to start nationally. Uh, we want to start uh, nationally before we expand and um, start networking internationally. But internationally, uh, it's it's easier said than done. And then nationally is harder done than it's said. And I feel like uh, that just, that has to do with um, a lot of professionals, man. When you get into folks' personal business, like literally, when you're dealing with sole proprietors and their personal business, they can be a little defensive. They can be a little defensive on what their operation looks like. Um, they don't like feeling judged. So if you tell them or if you highlight to them, if you try to shed some light, open their eyes on potential opportunity and their own business on how to improve it, 
on how to maximize um, a particular advantage that their business is good at, they take it as like a form of judgment. And the shit is hard. The shit is hard. It, it requires that you be a corporate cowboy, sneak into their fucking mind using logic and tact and plant the seed. Sometimes they'll recognize what you're doing and appreciate it. Sometimes they won't recognize what you're doing and then later, <laughs> I've seen this before, later we'll come back to you in the future and then feed you back the same line that you gave them and pretend it was their own all along. That shit is... That shit is funny. It's glorious when it does happen. And you don't even need the glory. Sometimes, you, sometimes you're just handing out gems. Sometimes you're reverse pickpocketing. You're just slipping gems into motherfuckers' pockets. And then they, they discover them like, Oh, I had this gem in my pocket all along? Nah, dog. You were just handed it and then you found it. That's all. Like You can act that like you discovered it, but that shit was planted on you. Corporate cowboys are a lot like uh, Johnny Appleseed. Fucking just, at times, throwing good ideas, great ideas out there. And uh, this podcast might be a lot of that. Though I don't want to venture into anything super technical right now, like curing cancer or fucking stem cell or botany ethnobotany or like anything fucking crazy like chem or physical physics nothing like that at the moment because i need uh those would be episodes in this podcast that uh, i'd have to prepare for i mean if it was suggested if some folks you know, I don't know dropped the money on it and suggested that i make a podcast for a potential idea something that they spitball at me and and i could uh contemplate and consider and explore, investigate, and then report with my own spin on it, of course, as a corporate fucking cowboy, then by all means, because I'm not going to tell you, you just off top, oh, patent this one thing and then never fucking use it. Just, you know, just suppress innovation. Nah, there's plenty of patents out there that are suppressed and innovation isn't happening from, and um, they're sitting in vaults somewhere. And I mean, vaults, easily crackable, easily crackable vaults uh, for corporate cowboys. And because I don't know, sometimes I feel like I should already be out there doing shit. I should be back out there doing shit. And I'm just not. I'm, I'm not. I'm just not. So, yeah, I feel like I'm missing out on the fun. I feel like I'm missing out on creating fun. But, you know, I'm, I'm incubating right now. I'm incubating. I'm in the fucking... What is it called? Some fucking hyperbolic time chamber. Yeah, I saw one or two episodes of Dragon Ball Z and not even to not even complete episodes. Maybe like clips on on Facebook or Instagram or wherever. But um but that's how I'm treating school right now. I'm treating school right now because I can't be actively participating in in the political scene. Um I'm treating school right now as just like a time machine where I can step in and then a couple of months or a year or two pass by and then afterward I can step out and get to work. And that means I can't I can't be attached even ideologically to any political stance, to a political party even, to an affiliation. I can't be affiliated. I just step out and I get to work like a consummate professional would. I'm doing it for good. Yeah, the left, the right, they both have good ideas, great ideas even, but when it's all part of the same bird and you gotta recognize that that they're, that they're using it as bird, I gotta, be, I gotta be an apex predator. I gotta be better than the best bird. I have to be human. I gotta have the gauge. <laughs> I'm going bird hunting. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Fucking Monday, man. I'm pretty excited to see what this week is going to bring us. We had some rain. We had more rain. And uh, obviously, out in the West, we need that. Um, but uh, here where I am now, you know, I'm, I'm just getting reports. And the rain is always welcome. So whenever I visit... Whenever, um, yeah, whenever I visit, I need it to be, 
I don't need it to be, but I would love it for it to be green and I'll appreciate the landscape however it looks like. Because, yeah, cowboys are like like pioneers man i mean you could you could be in the desert you could be in the woods you could be on tundra you could be on in the forest corporate cowboy just gets it done man in the concrete jungle or without it fucking corporate cowboys so yeah this is um it's a good it's a good session. I mean, a lot of a lot of ranting. So I mean, I'm sorry if I blew a speaker or not with that Ric Flair woo. But uh, it's exciting. It's exciting. Why? Because if thinking about just thinking about becoming an apex predator, the more the more we talked about it, the more um, we considered it. What the possibility was is behind being an apex predator what it takes to be one how easy how easy it is to be one i mean it just it just requires that you let go of of the ego that causes you to think you're the best you got to recognize that even the best grows old and gets knocked the fuck off <laughs> even the best can be bested even the best can be stuck in their ways and then the only way to improve them is to be better off dead. <laughs> so I'm not, <clears throat> again, nothing, the only things set in stone are those things which are actually set in stone. And I mean, you'd, you would need physical, you would need empirical evidence for it. Otherwise, nothing is set in stone. And stone can be broken down into smaller stone. <clears throat> but that requires um, corporate cowboys. <clears throat> Hold on, I've been, I just noticed and I caught myself. It wasn't like deja vu, but I just noticed and caught myself saying something repetitively. What was it? I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't listen back to, on these episodes at all. It's, again, this is just me pontificating this is me just elaborating on on current current uh zeitgeist <laughs> on the current zeitgeist it's not it's not even me pontificating on current events if you uh, if i put down my views on current events i mean this would quickly go from a professional podcast to I mean, it would become a more formalized organization, but I don't need it to be centralized. I don't, I don't want it to be centralized. I'm not going to be the best at it. I won't. I probably won't be the leader for it. I mean, I'm the spokesperson, but as far as like actually leading, I don't want to have to be voluntold for it either. So I don't know. We'll see what happens. We'll see how how public, how public I'm, how, what is it? How publicly, how far into the public eye I am thrust forward. I'm thrust into how, how far into public view I'm thrust into. How far into public view I am thrust. Thrusted? See, that's what the purpose of this podcast is. This purpose, the purpose of this podcast is to become better at constructing sentences, obviously, to become better at arguing, at debating, at sewing together logical arguments using logic and tact. I mean, and there are, I think it's I mean. I think I've been repeating I mean. So fucking stop repeating that. Don't know if you've noticed, I've stopped uh, using, fuck, I just used, uh, I stopped using um a whole lot excessively. I've stopped using um excessively. That requires that I take a little bit more time and now that I think about it, I probably have been using um 
a lot through this podcast because I started off pretty excited. And to not use a uh, requires me to take a little bit of time, think about what I'm going to say completely, fucking breathe, and then talk. So, more techniques, I suppose. The purpose of this podcast is to allow me to take the time to analyze the way I think, analyze the way I speak, and evaluate ideas. The, my ideas evaluate the ideas of my associates and explore them, investigate them, talk about them, talk them through for soundness and reasonableness. Because in doing so, it assures me that arguments I'll use in the future, ideas that I'll propose in the future, initiatives that I'll take on in the future will be righteous, will be to create better opportunities, better things. In doing so, I'll need to identify opportunities. Investigating conflict, investigating areas of conflict really implies that I've got to learn to appreciate the good and the bad. Improving on the bad to create good necessarily implies that investigations are approached in an unbiased and objective fashion. And I've strived to be objective, unbiased all my life. Though the, um, what is it called? The phrase, what's it called? The quote where, what, what's that saying? Like, what, what's it called? It's escaping my mind. It's on the tip of my tongue and it's escaping my mind. Where the younger you are, the more liberal you are, I guess. And the older you become, the more conservative you turn. Something like that. And in, in truth, there is, I mean, honestly, in all honesty, there is some truth in that saying. It's a saying. Fucking Alex, come on. It is a saying. There is some truth in that saying. And um, there's additional context needed like everything else, you need context for it. You can't just claim to be the best and <laughs> not appreciate the apex predator in front of you. <laughs> and again, the apex predator, probably the most unbiased of all. Non-discriminatory, non-preferential, <laughs> unbiased, Objective. <laughs> just a, it's just a fucking a, a total, a total. What is it? A lean capital machine. That's all it is. A lean capital machine. Handling millions, making thou wows. <laughs> and that's what I'm striving to be. Since I was young, ever since I was young, I was wanted to be a gangster. I think I said that in the last episode. Every, ever since I was young, I always wanted to be a professional. That was the fucking dream, to grow up and wear a suit. For a while, I was like, I wanted to be, I wanted to be a nuclear engineer. Fucking. Well, I mean, I, I have dreams, right? I got dreams. But then it became uh, from nuclear engineer to, um, to just a professional. I just wanted to wear a suit. I just want to wear a suit and tie. And then the older I got, hold on, here's, here's where the more conservative part comes in. The older I got, I wanted to wear a ski mask and gloves. 
Oh, shit, bro. <laughs> Imagine that little cat. That little cat. Imagine that adult cat marrying um, a woman in like a burqa or something. <laughs> Conservative as fuck. <laughs> oh, shit. Um, <laughs> but no, uh, the reason for the ski mask and gloves and folks have asked me is because anybody could do it. Anybody could be a corporate cowboy. It could be anybody behind that mask. It could be anybody who puts on the fucking gloves and gets to work with it. Anyone. Anyone can step up from one day to the next. Really, from one day to the next. And pray. It takes both humility and courage. It's a sense of... Um, It's, it's bravery. It's bravery with vengeance. Happy Monday.